Hello everyone, welcome to our 12th conference for Teachers of English. Our theme for this year is language teaching during COVID-19. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all into this session and thank you for your participation. Today, I have the honor to introduce to Ms. Rachel Jo Salvedo. Ms. Salvedo is a teacher of English language for junior high school in the Philippines a keen eye for learning more about literature, language, and linguistics. Literacy enthusiasts focusing on developing strategies and techniques, enhancing and improving literacy among junior high school learners who show learning deficiency. So please join me in welcoming Ms. Salvedo with the topic Teaching Junior High School English as a Second Language. Hi, I'm Rachel de Salvada from the Philippines, a language teacher for eight years, and this is my first time in this international conference for language teacher, uh, for English teachers rather, and it is an honor to have been Im invited to be a part of this. Um, my topic would, uh, my topic is basically on teaching English as a second language to junior high school students. And uh, I want to share what we have come up with here in the Philippines in introducing English as a second language amidst the pandemic, especially now that education is delivered through distance learning. When... When we talk about teaching strategies, there are various ways or there are various strategies that we can and techniques that we can methods that we can talk about. And these methods, these techniques, these strategies are definitely challenged when the COVID-19 came upon came about and disrupted everything that was normal when in the field of education. Thus, we were able to, or the Department of Education here in the Philippines were able to come up with programs and activities to continue education. And with this, strategies that are applicable to the distance learning of our learners. When you talk about junior high school English, it means that we are already learning English as a second language. And when we talk about English as a second language, it is a language which we acquire. So there is a process of language acquisition. And according to many theories, according to many research, the best way to learn or to learn our second language is make sure that we have established knowledge with our first language or our L1. According to us, um, I would like to quote Steve, uh, Stephen Krashen, and, and he mentioned about language acquisition that it does not require extensive use of conscious grammar rules and does not require tedious drills. drills. Indeed, when we talk about us who are non-native speakers, commonly we are very conscious with our grammar when we are talking about the English language. When we are talking about learning the English language, drills, tedious drills, and grammatical drills are presented to our learners. Yes, it is very important. But if there's one thing that we, I would like to there is one take I have with teaching language amidst this pandemic is that it is important that we are able to deliver our lesson, our, our message to our learners and our, less, and our learners are also able to communicate with us. So let's talk about these specific strategies, starting with these specific factors that influence language learning of our learners. What are 
these factors that affects second language learning. Initially, when you talk about second language learning, the first thought in mind when you're learning it, why do I need to learn the language? Why do I want to learn the language? That is why motivation is one of the factors when it comes to language learning. Motivation, the purpose, what motivates our learners to learn the language? Is it for education? Is it for communication? Is it for work? Is it for delivering the message? Is it for knowing more people, especially now that the internet have uh, exposed our learners to various languages? Gender, what the preferences, the gender preference of our learners, the age of our learner, learners rather also influences their uh, language or la second language learning. It, especially the age because the speed or the pacing of the learning differs and varies as the age of our learners changes. The socioeconomic status is not referring to this, is not meant to discriminate, uh, discriminate our learners, but instead it leads us to how well our learners learn, how our learners learn, and most especially their motivation in learning the language. And of course, the level of proficiency and intelligence of our learners. When we talk about level of proficiency or the intelligence of our learners, this also comes with the pacing of their learning, the, the process of learning, and the skill itself of learning the second language is influenced by the level of proficiency of our learners. Now, let's talk about the basic strategies. These are just basic. These are just simple strategies that I hope would be applicable to all of us who are also second language learners, who are also not considered to be non-native speakers. Okay, here are some essential strategies. First and foremost is cultivating relationships and being culturally responsive. As educators, um, we believe that a successful classroom is one in which students feel feels understood, respected, and at least taking emotional and intellectual risk. In short, when we talk about, when us educators, when we talk about classrooms, since we are now in the distance learning, we are not only talking about learners in the traditional classroom setting, in a face-to-face -face setting, but there are a variety of pla platforms now that we use as classroom, and mostly it comes online. And since there is no actual um, connection with our learners, in the online platform. We want to be able to, to cultivate that relationship and be responsive to our learners because it helps them communicate. It leads them to deliver a message. It leads them to use the language. But at the same time, we still need to practice humane acts in our uh, online classroom. We need to be able to listen to our learners in any way we can. And they, we need to be able to respect their needs and respect their background by learning them. That's why we need to be culturally responsive. We need to be able to deliver by looking into observing the background that they have in the online setting and avoid calling out learners, respect what we see among our learners, and introduce culture of respect as well within the classroom. We also need to be able to respond to the need. Not all our learners are capable of uh, attending our online classes or accessing our online classroom. So we deliver here in the Philippines, we do home visitations for our learners who are not able to attend online classes. 
or with the presence of their parents, they can do a one-on-one -on -one tutorial. Like, uh, for example, they can visit teacher offices to do one-on-one -on -one tutorial for some areas in the modules that they are not able to, to understand, most especially those learners that we have identified to have difficulty in reading. So we do him home visitations, we do community classes, and we even do one-on-one -on -one tutorials. A second strategy to introduce is teaching the skills of language across curriculum. Since we are teaching English as a second language, commonly our focus is only teaching English as a language. But how do these learners apply the language that they learn? They cannot always just apply it, the grammatical rules, the, the sentence construction, the paragraph writing in the English platform. We can use this in various ways. We can use this in the arts, we can use this in mathematics, we can use this in science, even in our social, social sciences classes, even in our values formation, in our religious formation for our learners. So there are various ways, and even as simple as learning the basics of uh, household chores, we can teach learners language by introducing to them, by expanding their vocabulary using various techniques, uh, using what they can learn in other discipline, in other curriculum that they can adapt the English language and use it when it comes to language, um, display of language skills. Here are some of the examples that where we use our where we use language or the knowledge of the English language. For example, um, when we talk about Arling Panlipunan, this is our social science class, and the education sa pagpapakatao is our values formation classes. We introduce certain disciplines to our learners, their understanding of social issues, their understanding of what is happening around them, and creating their own version or their own point of view, their own reaction with this we are able to have them communicate and give their message, convey the message using the language that we introduce to them or using the English language for that matter. Of course, we also give, we need to give emphasis on productive language. Even if our learners are hesitant in learning the language or, or apprehensive in using the language in communicating because probably the environment that they have could look at them differently if they try to use the language or if they try to pronounce it properly or mispronounce the language. The social, the social um, psychology, the culture that they have in their environment. But still, we need to give emphasis on the productivity of the language and by you ensuring them that they their fluency in the language will just will not only help them in acquiring knowledge in expanding in expanding their vocabulary in expanding their skill but it will also give them the capacity to understand and to influence others and to even teach others in learning or acquiring the english language Another point to take note of is when you teach the English language, we need to speak slowly and increase our time of weight. We have different uh, we have different learners in a classroom. We have multiple intelligences. We have learning um, diversity. So we need to speak in a pace where our learners will be able to adjust according to their learning style, to their pace of learning, to their level of intelligence. So we need to understand that not all of our learners will be able to immediately grasp what we teach them. Not all of them will be able to 
get immediately what we need, what we want them to know. And not all of them will be able to immediately process the information that we deliver. So we need to not only speak slowly, but take the time. Give our learners the time they need to process what we have taught them. Okay, so differentiate and use multiple modalities. What do we mean by differentiate and use multiple modalities? When we introduced distance learning here in the Philippines, we introduced various modalities in teaching, not only the English language, but of course, all other disciplines as well. So we have distance learning online or digital module. We have offline printed modules. We have the TV, wherein we have teachers who actually do the teaching and made a studio for classroom setting on TV. We have radio-based instruction, wherein uh, teachers record lessons using their voices and introduce lessons through radio-based instruction. Again, we have printed modules. We have blended learning. So our learners have the option to, to mix printed modules or digital or e-modules to radio-based instruction or TV or television-based instruction. And then we also have the homeschooling. Since it's home, there our learners are homeschooled. They are given the, uh, they are given access to different to these various modalities. Modules are delivered to them. TV broadcasts are are broadcast in specific channel for the Department of Education, even to our YouTube channel. We also have radio broadcast channels, and we practice Google Classrooms, um, we use Zoom Conference, Google Meet, and other platforms online that we can make use of. We even make our own Facebook pages and YouTube pages for this. So we handle classrooms, we sort our modules and give time to deliver these modules. Last is incorporate students' native language and don't be afraid of technology. With the past phase uh, advancements in, in technology right now, there are so many teachers we discovered here in the Philippines that are afraid of technology. If not because they are afraid of computers, but because they do not know how they will be able to grasp the knowledge of using technology, of using the advanced way of teaching. But there's still one thing that we need to remember. In introducing language, the second language, we need to incorporate first language. So what is the native language? What is the mother tongue of our learner? We incorporate that in teaching our the English language. Commonly, we do um, language switching. So we we translate, not verb vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, but instead we interpret or we translate the com the context of the lesson so that we can properly um, introduce it to our learners, especially to our learners who have learning difficulties. That is when we need to incorporate students' native language and adapt to technology. Why adapt to technology? Our learners are fast learners. And with the type of learners that we have now, they definitely the use of technology is very important because they use technology more than they use regular classroom textbooks. 
basically that's it thank you very much for the time that you have spared and if you have any questions i have here my email please do feel free to contact me and i'll be very glad to share with you more strategies and techniques and even more programs that we make use here in the philippines and even i personally make use of so again thank you very much and good day